Buzz Lightyear is the cocky, self-assured space ranger from the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. First appearing in Pixar's debut feature film, 1995's Toy Story, Buzz finds his roots in an earlier character from one of the studio's short films. Originally appearing in toy form, Buzz quickly became an iconic and highly beloved character, soon taking on a life of his own. Having been presented in numerous iterations, including a cartoon series based on the hero behind the toy and a feature film which tackles the same premise. In 2022, Buzz stars in Lightyear and celebrates his 27th anniversary. And to help him, I will trace his short yet incredible evolution from 1995 to now. To do so, we will look at his entire history, touching on his various changes and iterations over nearly three decades of films, series and extended media. In this edition of Cartoon Evolutions Explaining Disney. In 1986, Apple CEO and co-founder Steve Jobs purchased the Lucasfilm computer graphics group Pixar. Primarily a hardware developer, innovating systems and software to create computer-generated imagery, Pixar had tasked their interface designer John Lasseter, a former Disney animator, to create a series of experimental short films to promote their image computers and demonstrate the groundbreaking work that could be done with them. Due to the limitations of the technology and the plasticky look of CG animation in its infancy, Lasseter's earliest films featured inanimate objects as their lead protagonists. In 1988, Lasseter and Pixar crafted Tin Toy, a five minute short which followed Tinny, a wind up tin toy being menaced by a baby, inspired by observations of his newborn nephew playing with his favourite toys, putting them in his mouth and slobbering on them. Initially screened exclusively to scientists and engineers, the revolutionary film soon sent shockwaves through the animation community and Hollywood, winning the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film as the first computer animated film to win an Oscar. Soon after Tin Toy's success, Pixar wanted to continue pushing boundaries and explore longer format animation to build the experience needed to produce a feature length film. They devised a half hour television special titled A Tin Toy Christmas, which they began shopping around to various studios in the early 1990s. The idea saw Tinny left at a rest stop during a family vacation and found by a junk man. Thrown in the back of a junk truck, Tinny meets an old ventriloquist dummy and they break free together, escaping to Toy Heaven, a preschool where they'll never get lost or outgrown. At this time, Walt Disney Animation was at the apex of their renaissance era, a period which saw the studio release a run of highly successful and critically lauded films, bringing a fresh wave of glory unlike anything they'd seen in almost 30 years. Experimentation was also so running rife, with the studio welcoming new forms of animation into the fold, and even utilising Pixar's technologies to incorporate computer generated elements. The executives at Disney Animation, including President Peter Schneider, Senior Vice President Thomas Schumacher, and Department Head and Studio Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg, showed a keen interest in Pixar's pitch. Though instead of commissioning the short special, Disney offered the chance to make a feature length film. Pixar co-founder Ed Cartmore said, I thought about it for one nanosecond and said, okay, it's our one shot, so what the hell? Tackling such an ambitious project with such limited technology, Pixar decided to simply take the Tin Toy Christmas idea and adjust and expand it. Together with supervising animator Pete Doctor, storyboard artist Andrew Stanton, and head of story Joe Ramft, Lasseter began reworking the story, with a new concept following a ventriloquist dummy who finds himself replaced as a child's favourite toy by a brand new tin toy gifted to him on his birthday. Focusing on how the old toy and the new toy deal with it, it became a buddy comedy of two opposing characters learning to live alongside each other, titled Toy Story. 
It was soon decided, however, that Tinny needed to be changed, with Lassiter noting, it didn't make sense that a tin toy would become a kid's new favourite toy. Returning to the drawing board to find something more hip and current, the team reminisced on their favourite toys growing up, with many fondly remembering G.I. Joe, loaded with accessories, moving parts and action functions like the Karate Chop. Lassiter also observed the more contemporary action figures his sons currently had in their arsenal. Growing up in the space age, the team eventually settled on a high-tech spaceman action figure and began to craft the toy that any boy would just die to have, giving him all the accessories and functions they could think of. Pop-up wings with flashing indicators, a laser, a multi-phrase voice simulator, an intergalactic wrist communicator, a deep space visor and control buttons. The character went through various iterations. There were vintage inspired versions, cutesy cartoony versions, robotic versions, superhero like versions, human like versions, hairy versions and straight up bizarre versions. Early designs saw him as a golden age space hero from the 1930s named Luna Larry, while a later test script saw him named Tikor. Other names considered were Tolar and Micros, while an animation test used the name Tempest from Morph. The character was ultimately christened Buzz Lightyear, taking his name from Apollo 11 astronaut and second man to walk on the moon, Buzz Aldrin. Additionally, Buzz's final design was heavily inspired by the Apollo spacesuits, taking their white colour scheme, skull caps and clear bubble helmets. Purple and fluorescent green accents were added as they were, respectively, the favourite colours of Lassiter and his wife Nancy. With this major change, filmmakers made the ventriloquist dummy, now named Woody, a cowboy, so that the characters were as opposite as possible, with each representing an untamed frontier, space and the Old West. When the team realised that the dummy looked kind of spooky, he was changed to a vintage rag doll with a scratchy pull-string voice box, inspired by Lassiter's childhood Casper doll, further distinguishing him from the high-tech, high Fi Spaceman toy. One major character evolution didn't come until Tim Allen, the actor chosen to voice Buzz, was in the recording booth. Editor Lee Unkrich said, Tim Allen, as an actor, brought a lot to that character and forced us to look at the character in a much more unique and specific way. While Lassiter noted, he can play the macho guy but with a soft underbelly. It's very interesting because in the beginning, Buzz Lightyear was much more superhero-like. He was putting a spin on it that was much more realistic, so we evolved the character. He further noted that Alan played Buzz so honest and real, filmmakers began to realise that, unlike all the other characters, Buzz shouldn't even know he's a mass-produced toy, but be convinced he's an actual space ranger, the real Buzz Lightyear, on a mission to save the galaxy from the evil Emperor Zerg. Buzz was thus re-envisioned as someone a little more realistic and earthbound, like a cop. This simple change in vocal performance made the character click into place and not only changed his persona and mannerisms, but how his movement was animated. Directing animator Rich Quaid said, Buzz moves bluntly because that's the way he thinks. With this, filmmakers began envisioning Buzz as an action figure based on an in-universe Saturday morning cartoon that his new owner, Andy, was a huge fan of. In fact, Toy Story initially began with Andy and his toys watching the harrowing climax of an episode of Buzz Lightyear Defender of the Universe. Set to be produced in 2D traditional animation, this opening was storyboarded and utilised in the original story reel. However, after a disastrous screening with Disney execs, which threatened to have the production shut down, Pixar were forced to rework the movie in just weeks. In what Stanton called one of the film's biggest losses, the opening cartoon was removed in order to put more focus on Andy's relationship with Woody. Woody, voiced by Tom Hanks, was deemed a complete jerk in the original version and was conversely reworked into an affably lovable hero. Buzz 
and Woody were finally solidified into the versions we all know and love. Two polar opposites who must set aside their differences and live and work together for the greater good, following major epiphanies which make them both realise their true place in the world. Toy Story opened in late 1995 and immediately sent ripples through the pop culture landscape, taking in $350 million at the global box office on a budget of $30 million, it became the year's highest grossing movie domestically, beating out Batman Forever, James Bond Goldeneye, Apollo 13 also starring Hanks and even Disney's Pocahontas. Behind only Disney's The Lion King and Aladdin, it even became the third highest grossing animated film of all time. It was praised by critics and audiences, not only for its technological innovations, which won the film a Special Achievement Academy Award, but also for its story and characters, who swiftly entered the cultural lexicon as universally beloved icons. Buzz and Woody were even instantly introduced as performing and meetable characters in the Disney parks. Likewise, Buzz's catchphrase, To infinity! and beyond entered mainstream vernacular, still considered one of the most recognisable film quotes ever. Toy Story merchandise hit the market, and with much lower supply than demand, real life Buzz Lightyear action figures flew off the shelves, causing a holiday shopping frenzy. Caught up in the fever was filmmaker Chris Columbus, whose plight to get a Buzz Lightyear figure for his son partly inspired the 1996 Christmas film Jingle All The Way, which starred Arnold Schwarzenegger as a parent madly trying to get his son a sold out Turbo Man action figure on Christmas Eve. As part of the film's publicity, Buzz starred in a number of short promotional pieces, including a pair of faux interviews with animation historian John Colhane, who spoke with Buzz and Woody about the making of the film for its theatrical release. The pair additionally appeared during a short segment during the 68th Academy Awards ceremony in 1996 to accept their special award. Also between 1996 and 1997, to promote the home media release of the film, a series of 54 short interstitials, collectively known as Toy Story Treats, aired on ABC Saturday mornings. Running between 10 and 30 seconds each, these shorts featured Buzz and other characters, mainly in sight gags and brief comedic situations. Within months, work on a Toy Story sequel had begun. As Pixar already had their hands full with their second feature, A Bug's Life, it was initially planned as a traditionally animated direct-to-video movie at Disney. However, Pixar eventually took over the production as a CG animated theatrical release. Furthering the adventures of Buzz, Woody and the gang, Toy Story 2 expanded their world. Not only taking the toys on a grand adventure after Woody is stolen by a collector, but by adding depth to the characters themselves. While Woody was revealed to be part of a vintage line of toys based on a classic TV series, filmmakers finally found their opportunity to delve into the expanded world of the Buzz Lightyear IP. Taking inspiration from the first movie's original cartoon opening, Toy Story 2 opens with an elaborate action sequence, pitting Buzz against an army of robots and Emperor Zerg, before revealing it all to be part of a Buzz Lightyear video game. Cosmetically, Buzz didn't see an enormous change, however all CG models were given a major upgrade, utilising Pixar's newest technology which offered more realistic graphics and smoother moving animation. However, filmmakers came across an enormous challenge when it came to Buzz's character. Co-director Ash Brannan noted, What worked so well on Buzz Lightyear in the first movie was he was deluded and that that's what made him funny. We faced a problem in the sequel because now he knows he's a toy, he's come down to earth. How do you keep him funny? Their solution? Expand Buzz's world even further by introducing more toy Buzzers who, fresh out of the box, are still under their spaceman delusion. As such, a new generation Buzz, complete with brand new anti-gravity utility belt, joined the crew, bringing a new element of tension as he assumes the identity 
identity of Old Buzz and takes his place. Old Buzz is forced to fight back, prove himself as worthy as the new Buzz, and once more reclaim his rightful place amongst his pals. Additionally, Zerg was introduced in toy form, chasing down the Buzzers and causing extra trouble for the gang. Following an incredibly troubled production, Toy Story 2 opened in late 1999 and once again garnered widespread acclaim, taking in almost $500 million on a $90 million budget, it was even more lucrative than the first, taking over as the third highest grossing animated film of all time. The film's marketing campaign was similar, with Buzz featuring in numerous promo shorts and once again making an appearance at the Academy Awards. This time round, he even starred in the official video game Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue, which allowed players to control Buzz on his adventure to save Woody. Concurrently with the production of Toy Story 2, Disney was eyeing off other ways to mine the franchise and began considering an animated Saturday morning cartoon spin-off. While potential early ideas included a Woody's Roundup Neo Western, a Combat Carl action adventure series and a workplace comedy starring the Little Green Men, animator Tad Stones, producer of Darkwing Duck and Chippendale Rescue Rangers, came up with a sci-fi adventure series starring Buzz. Then Disney chairman and CEO Michael Eisner loved the idea and greenlit it. Well aware that Buzz the Toy was always based on some sort of animated show, Stones initially devised the series more in line with the original cartoon that was set to open the first Toy Story. A serious action heavy cartoon similar to Hanna-Barbera's classic Space Ghost or Marvel's G.I. Joe. However, artists soon realised a more exaggerated concept would would work better, moving away from straight and towards silly, crafting an action comedy sci-fi buddy cop show which could draw on the action and humour of the Toy Story movies. It was titled Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Stones noted that the first Toy Story was a fish out of water story for Buzz, so the show should be a fish in water story, showing the real Buzz as the fantastic hero that the toy version talks about being. Along with this, artists moved Buzz away from his more traditional design to one more stylized, angular and goofy. To make a way different show than what was thought of by John Lasseter, Stones and the team surrounded Buzz with a crew of both experienced and inept space cadets who could bring both action and humour to the stories. Granted access to production materials from Toy Story 2, animators made sure their character designs were in line with what Pixar were doing. With Tim Allen unavailable for the series, comedic actor Patrick Warburton was cast as Buzz, putting a new and unique spin on the character. Initially, Disney hoped to debut Star Command prior to Toy Story 2's release. However, when Pixar execs got wind, they were unhappy and convinced Eisner to delay it to avoid confusing audiences and stealing or overshadowing the movie's energy. With a hole open in Disney's home video schedule, now that Toy Story 2 had moved to theatrical, the Star Command crew were given extra time to craft a feature-length pilot to kick the series off as a direct-to-video movie. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, the adventure begins. With the series mostly completed, elements such as backgrounds, ships and characters could be repurposed, meaning more budget was able to be thrown into new things, resulting in a higher production value. At the final hour, Disney execs brought Tim Allen on board the pilot as Buzz to connect it more to the movies. Allen thus had to re-dub Warburton's recordings to the completed animation. Essentially imitating an imitation of his original performance, Allen found difficulty in matching Warburton's cadence and rhythms, hence why Buzz sounds a little off here. Buzz Lightyear Mission Log. We've searched this gaseous planetoid from top to bottom, with no sign of the missing personnel. The movie was eventually re-edited and reissued as the series' first three episodes, featuring Warburton's original recordings. Buzz Lightyear Mission Log. We've searched this gaseous planetoid from top to bottom, with no sign of the missing personnel. The pilot movie was released in early August of 2000, while the series debuted that October and ran for 65 episodes until mid-January 2001 before entering syndication for a near decade. 
To coincide with the series, another Buzz video game was released to major platforms. While Pixar had little input on the production, they did animate a short opening for Adventure Begins, which featured Buzz, Woody and Pals popping in a VHS to watch the movie. Likewise, they provided a brief portion for the series opening sequence utilising the same premise, again very similar to Toy Story's original opening. Given Pixar's lack of control over the property and the fact that it spawned during a period of unease between them and Disney, it's been stated that Lasseter hates the series, possibly explaining why, in time, it's become an underseen curio and has never received a home media release. While the Toy Story brand lay relatively dormant over the following decade, Pixar did manage to sneak a few cameos into their films. Firstly, in 2003's Finding Nemo, Toy Buzz made a very quick cameo on the floor of the dentist's office. While 2006's Cars sported an end credits gag sequence featuring a drive-in theatre screening Toy Car Story, featuring toy car versions of Buzz and Woody. In 2008, Buzz found himself on a real-life adventure into space, with NASA signing him up to the Toys in Space program. For this, an original 12-inch Buzz figure was sent aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery to the International Space Station, where he appeared in numerous educational videos. Returning 15 months later in late 2009, Buzz became the longest-serving astronaut in space, toy or human. As a result of this initiative, Buzz even finally got the chance to meet his namesake. A collaboration with Disney Parks, the trip was planned as part of their Year of a Million Dreams promotion and to celebrate the opening of the Toy Story Mania attraction at Walt Disney World, a television commercial of which featured Buzz. Also in 2008, Buzz debuted in balloon form in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, where he featured for six consecutive years. With Disney and Pixar's tumultuous relationship reaching boiling point in 2004, Eisner exercised his rights to greenlight a third Toy Story movie without Pixar's involvement, in an alleged attempt to force the studio's hand into a new deal. Set to be produced at Circle 7 Animation, a brand new Disney division specialising in Pixar sequels, Eisner's Toy Story 3 would have seen a faulty buzz sent to Taiwan for repairs before or facing possible destruction when he gets caught up in a toy-wide recall. Thankfully in 2005, Eisner was ousted from Disney and replaced by President and COO Bob Iger, who made swift moves to repair the relationship with Jobs and acquire Pixar for $7.4 billion. Lasseter and Cartmore were put in charge of Walt Disney Animation and immediately shut down Circle 7, moving the production of Toy Story 3 to Pixar to be completely completely reworked. The movie now featured Buzz, Woody and the gang being left behind after Andy heads off to college. After a mix-up, they wind up at Sunnyside Daycare Centre where they briefly find a new lease on life, before realising it's not the toy heaven they thought it was and Buzz leads a jailbreak. After an emotional journey, the toys find love and happiness with a new owner, Bonnie. For the film, Pixar had to create brand new models for the toys given that the original files were unusable. Pixar recreated the characters from scratch with state-of-the-art details, textures and sturdiness. The film also introduced Spanish Buzz when he is switched to Spanish language mode. With a smooth romantic persona, animator Carlos Bayana gave him a heightened performance style, inspired by the fluid and passionate movements of flamenco and Latin ballroom dancers and Spanish bullfighters. Toy Story 3 opened in mid-2010, not only becoming the highest grossing movie of the year, but the highest grossing animated film of all time at the time, when it crossed over $1.06 billion at the global box office. It additionally took in two Oscars, including Best Animated Feature, and two further nominations, including Best Picture Overall, only the third animated film in history to be recognised in the category. Similarly to the previous movies, Toy Story 3 also received a video game, which featured Buzz as one of the main playable characters. Over the following years, the Toy Story franchise got a brand new lease on life in various short productions. 
First was a small run of theatrically released six minute short films called Toy Story Tunes. 2011's Hawaiian Vacation saw the toys planning a fake holiday for Barbie and Ken and saw a brief return of Spanish Buzz, this time in holiday attire. 2011's Small Fry focused on Buzz being replaced by a kid's fun meal toy version of himself. This new three inch version was small, energetic and just as cocky as the out of the box Buzz, taking on the classic Space Ranger persona. Major difference however is from the start, he's aware that he's a toy. And 2012's Partysaurus Rex saw Rex throwing a bath time rave, while Buzz and the others listen in. Additionally, Pixar released two 20 minute holiday television specials, the first ever from the studio. In 2013's Halloween special, Toy Story of Terror, Buzz and the toys get lost at a creepy motel and have to find their way back to Bonnie. And in 2014's Christmas special, Toy Story That Time Forgot, Buzz and Woody are forced to fight battle sores in Bonnie's friend's battle sore arena playset. In 2015, Buzz starred in a television commercial advertising the newly renovated Renovated at Disneyland Resort. And in 2016, Buzz and Woody returned to the Academy Awards to present that year's Oscar for Best Animated Feature, which went to Pixar's Inside Out. In 2017, Buzz and Woody Pinatas appeared in Pixar's Coco. And in 2018, he cameoed in Disney's Ralph Breaks the Internet. While Buzz didn't get a complete makeover, he did look somewhat more cartoonish, likely as this was the first time he was animated by Walt Disney. Disney animation. In 2014, Pixar announced a fourth Toy Story, with Lasseter, Stanton, Doctor and Unkrich developing a treatment focused on the idea of lost toys, toys that have been abandoned by their owner. In yet another tumultuous production, the film went through numerous drafts, including a pass by Rashida Jones and Will McCormack. In 2017, John Lasseter stepped down from his planned directorial duties, leaving co-director Josh Cooley to tackle the film. Film solo. Mere months later, Lasseter left Pixar entirely after alleged workplace sexual misconduct allegations arose. In the most emotional instalment, Toy Story 4 saw Buzz leading a mission to find Woody after he disappears on a journey of self-discovery. Once again, filmmakers recreated the characters and enhanced them with more details and textures than possible previously. While Buzz took his most realistic design yet, no new iterations were introduced. The movie released in mid-2019 and grossed over $1.07 billion at the global box office, one of six Disney movies to cross the billion dollar mark that year, contributing to a still held studio record. It also went on to win Best Animated Picture at the Academy Awards. Additionally, in 2019, Buzz, Woody and Pals appeared in the Toy Story toy box of video game Kingdom Hearts 3, where they travelled to the Galaxy Toys toy store alongside Sora, Donald and Goofy to rescue Andy and other kidnapped toys. The story is set canonically between Toy Story 2 and 3, and cutscenes make up a near 45 minute film. Pixar animators and character designers worked heavily as consultants to make sure everything looked as true to the films as they could make it, while actual character models were provided to Square Enix by Pixar. Due to this, many fans consider Kingdom Hearts as Toy Story level canonical. In 2021, Buzz starred in the one and a half minute Pixar popcorn short To Fitness and Beyond, released exclusively to Disney+. Here Buzz was seen trying to motivate the other toys in Bonnie's room to take part in a high impact fitness class. He also briefly appeared in that year's Simpsons parody short Plusiversary, an official Disney production also exclusive to Disney Plus, where he's seen arm wrestling with the Mandalorian in Moe's Tavern. In 2022, however, Buzz stars in his very own movie, where he's seen in yet another very different iteration. Designed as the in-universe movie that inspired the toy, Lightyear takes the form of a classic sci-fi movie that could have spawned an entire franchise. According to director Angus McLean, a Pixar veteran and proclaimed Buzz expert, Lightyear is Andy's Star Wars, the movie that Andy saw that changed his life. In Reimagining Buzz, 
because filmmakers wanted to make sure they celebrated but still got away from his extraordinarily iconic classic design. Buzz's new design didn't necessarily need to be realistic but believable, a little more vulnerable and relatable. There were some iconic elements that obviously had to stay the same, such as his chin dimple, big round eyes, barrel chest and narrow waist, though others such as his ginormous chin had to be toned down and made more human. Additional elements also had to be added, with filmmakers wanting to tackle what Buzz looked like underneath the spacesuit, featuring him throughout the movie for the first time in civilian clothes and with hair. That said, the spacesuit was certainly an important element of the character, with designers coming up with numerous suits for Buzz's various flights, including an orangish red coloured one designed as an homage to the early Lunar Larry concepts. The original suit, of course, is featured heavily, with a fresh look designed to feel functional, real, and tangible, following McLean's desire to make the film's world appear tactile, chunky, and cinematic, like classic sci fi films of the pre CGI era, with character designer Grant Alexander saying, Angus really pushed the team to think about the functionality and mechanics. We wanted a solid, constructed, mechanical reality. As to why Buzz looks so different in this in-universe movie than he does in his toy form, McLean explained, I imagine this was a movie that then later there was a spin-off cartoon, and then the toy was made off of that cartoon design. So when you really think about it in in-universe terms, the movie Lightyear came, and then Buzz Lightyear of Star Command came, and then the toy came. In the film, McLean wanted to ask, who is Buzz Lightyear, and flesh out this whole world that we've never encountered. Discovering that Buzz is a character who is best when he is at odds with his surroundings and always has a disagreement over the nature of reality, filmmakers devised a story that saw him travelling rapidly through time, while being separated from society and his loved ones, and going up against a giant robotic zerg encapsulating the film's core idea as nostalgia for the past while rapidly jumping to the future, essentially drawing ties with the Toy Story films while forging a new future. Wanting to hammer home the idea that the movie presented a different Buzz that's definitely not the Buzz we know, Buzz was given a brand new voice in an attempt to find a separation from Toy Story. The role went to our universe's Captain America, Chris Evans. McLean said, because the voice is so iconic, Iconic, you run the risk of imitation. What I wanted is something to be different. McLean found Evans to have the gravitas and seriousness of the character, while also being able to tackle the more humorous moments without necessarily being overly goofy, the perfect balance of comedy and drama. With Lightyear now opening in cinemas around the globe, it's fantastic to see our favourite space ranger out on his grandest adventure yet. And with plenty more left to go, no matter what the form, we'll all be there to join him to infinity and beyond. And at that, I want to know what is your favourite Buzz Lightyear appearance or iteration? Fire away down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If you want to check out more evolutions or some of my past Toy Story videos, you can find them linked on your screen. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.